All right, what are we doing? All right, well, I had to wait for Noah to get home. He's been gone all day, so I wanted to wait for him to be able to open this. Um, but it's bedtime, so we're just gonna do it. Emily wanted me to wait till tomorrow, but I wanna see it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Da da da. What's this? A letter. I don't have my glasses. You did it. One mission, one channel, and one more thing. One million subscribers. Congratulations. You may have started with just a few viewers, but your voice, passion, and creativity have now touched the lives of people around the world. And the community you've built is enriched by the stories you've shared as you bring people together. To honor this milestone, we're proud to present you with the Gold Creator Award. Shoot! <laughs> I'm not going to cry. Too late. The Gold Creator Award. <laughs> we hope this special recognition will remind you how much you mean to so many. Every day, you are redefining how content is created and watched one voice and one video at a time. It's a privilege to be part of your journey. We can't wait to see what you do next. Aww. That's so sweet. All right, ready? Yay! Very cool. Let's see. Hold oh, on. they really got it packed in here. <laughs> oh no, they spelled it wrong. I was gonna say the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's. Job done. Thank you, Noah. I'm proud of you, babe. Aww. I'm so proud of you, sweetheart. Oop, nope, you're getting my face. What? Because <laughs> I'm trying to record because oh, yeah. it's shiny. Aww. That's cool. Good job, babe. We're proud of you. Let's go compare it to the other one. It's a lot bigger. Mm hmm. Good. Aww. I thought you were going to do the other one. I'll hang it tomorrow. No, this is where the next level homestead ones will go. Oh, uh, okay. All right, you want to say anything? Well, this is not for this channel, but I'm sure most of you are a part of the million. So thank you, all of you guys. Now we're going to go to bed. I'll see you tomorrow. Night. It's the next day, and uh, I've got Daisy out here grazing. The grass is slowly fading away. So I'm letting her enjoy as much time out here as possible. And I don't know if you can tell, even though we've been getting rain, I guess this is just not the kind of grass. Most of this is oat that sticks around. It looks green in camera, but not so much in real life. Closer look, you can kind of tell better. So I have a call in to a well drilling company for an estimate. So we should know about that fairly soon. I actually talked to both of my neighbors, the one over here and the one up here. They both have wells and they both are exclusive to their well. Uh, and they both had them for decades, which means they're not on city water at all. So that was kind of cool to hear. Um, also, what was cool to hear is uh, they've both lived here for 40, 50, even more years. And they've never had the wells run dry. You think of Southern California, I've lived here all my life and I would have never expected that, you know, in years, multiple years of drought, their wells are still pumping water normally. Um, and that's because all the mountains that surround almost all sides of us here, there's a lot of water stored in those mountains and the gravity feeds it right down here into this valley. So uh, that's the reason. Today, we are going to get to the project that I talked about on the last video that I didn't have time for, and that is weeding the cottage garden. I wasn't able to get to it before, but we did have more rains, and so now the soil is even more moist to get those, those weeds out easier. There are some weeds still actually in the beds, um, but I'm going to hold off getting into the beds right now because they are still a little bit too wet. And you just want to avoid working in your beds when they're too overly saturated with water. You just risk compacting the soil, and I don't want that. I am a little disappointed. I've been talking about daffodils in this area. Had them last year, they looked 
great. And then I expected them to overwinter. They were a type that overwintered winters here. I've had them overwinter before. Well, they weren't coming up, weren't coming up, but I had hope because the ones on this side that I planted this fall weren't coming up either. So I thought, well, maybe it's just a late year for whatever reason. Well, right now I see one daffodil right there. That's the only one I see on the side from last year. And on the side from this fall, I've got one blooming, barely, and I think I've counted maybe five or six that have come up through here that aren't yet blooming. More of them are here on this end that are coming up. So my thoughts on that are, I think, because you can't blame the bulb company. I mean, the chances, of, they looked fine. The bulbs looked fine when I planted them. I think I may have planted them too deep. I might have planted them too, too deep last year, but they kind of somehow made it through. I, I don't know exactly. Too deep for our soil type. Down deep where I planted them, there's a lot of clay, it's heavy. Um, so I may be thinking of some different experiments to try this fall, because I don't want to give up. I'm gonna get to work weeding. Hopefully this will be a really satisfying video. Is there anything more satisfying in the garden than weeding a bed and having it done? Look at that. Now I know I'm gonna get questions on this tool that I'm using. And unfortunately, as of right now, it's not available. I put this, um, a link, Amazon link to this on a video I did on weeding last year on Excel Gardening. Sold the product out and for whatever reason, they never came back in stock. So if the link is still good and takes you to a spot that just says out of stock, I'll put the link down below and that way you can keep tabs on it if they ever come back in stock. Um, but maybe the link is completely gone, therefore you won't find it in the description. On to the next area. I should probably mention there's nothing inherently special about this type of tool. It's pretty popular to find something similar, a handle, a stick with a double prong thing on the end. The reason I got this one in particular is because typically the, between the, the tool, the working end and the handle, there's some kind of joint. It's two pieces and invariably you have to buy a new one every year, if not a couple times a year because they just break. I got this one because it's all made out of one piece and it's really strong. So that's the only difference. But my dad, he used to get dandelions out of the lawn with a putty knife. So you could use anything. I totally forgot about the Eclipse. I was just sitting here working and these little light 
spots on my face that were hitting the ground were all crescent shaped. And I'm like, oh yeah, the eclipse. So I tried to get a little bit of video of it. Um, this camera is not the best for that type of photography. Uh, it's still going on right now. I don't watch a lot of news or hardly any, but it seemed like there was a big deal made out of this eclipse or people like talking about end times and stuff like that. I'm like, where'd that come from? We know what eclipses are, right? I thought so. Anyway, I have a funny story. Speaking of these little spots on my face, um, when I was a kid, I heard that you could view a uh, eclipse through a hole in a piece of paper, right? So we punched a hole in a piece of paper. We didn't hold it like this. We held it like this and looked up at the sun through the hole. So basically focusing all the light right down in that hole into our eyeballs. I still have my eyesight, so that's good. This weeding is taking a lot longer than I thought, but look at this. This is all cleaned out. It's all cleaned out from Bella this way, all along the, the chicken run, and to right here. And look at all this that the chickens have. <laughs> they will probably eat most of that by tomorrow at this time. Um, and then they'll continue to scratch and peck through it and uh, it'll just disintegrate and be nothing. All right, it's the next day and I could not do another full day of weeding. And that's probably what the cottage garden is gonna take another full day of weeding. Not two days in a row though. Today I'm in the vegetable garden and I'm getting some transplants of companion plants in the ground. So I've got a bunch here. I've got some Chinese mustard, yarrow, alyssum, basil, fennel and dill. Got some cilantro. Now for the most part, I usually start all my companions from seeds. I've got a lot from seed started in the garage right now. They're just tiny. Um, I'm doing it a little different this year because as I mentioned, I have a film crew coming here at the end of next month. And I wanna make sure that I have a couple of different uh, generations of these just in case one's too far gone. Um, the next ones will be coming along or in case something happens to the seedlings, I'll have some already in. So it's just really to cover my bases. A general rule of thumb is to plant your companion plant seeds at the same time you plant your main crop seeds. The only difference where I might go ahead and get transplants if you're just getting started is things like uh, fennel, dill, flowering carrot. It takes a long time for those things to reach the flowering stage and with those things it's the flowers, the umbellifer flowers, that actually bring in the bugs for the companion planting to work. So by the time they produce flowers, if you, if you sow the seeds at the same time, the bugs are probably already there and feasting on your uh, crops. So I have mapped out the beds in this garden. And a lot of these have, you know, already things growing, onions, garlic, cabbages are finishing up over there. For the most part, I've cleaned out uh, anything that is no longer going to be producing and it's going to be replaced by warm season crops. But right now I'm just going to get started on planting uh, some of these companion transplants.
All right, I'm back up weeding in the cottage garden. And before I jump anything new in with the chickens, I want you to see all those piles that I had in there the other day where you really couldn't even see the ground. I want to show you what they've done to that. Literally, hardly anything left. So they're ready for some new. The next day, I did get some more weeding done, but not all of it, it's a lot. I remember doing a weeding video at my last house and saying how much I loved weeding because it's so therapeutic. Not here. There's way too much here. I hate it. Anyway, uh, Daisy's been vocal lately when it's taking too long for me to let her out to graze. Right, Daisy? Can you say something for the audience here? Gonna make me out to be a liar? Maybe if I start walking away. The grass is fading fast. Like I said before, this is oat grass and it's a winter grass and our cool weather is coming to an end. Look at these ranunculus. They need to be deadheaded, but man, and the rain's been flattening them, but this gives me so much hope because normally when I grow ranunculus, they're not full like this. Like the flowers aren't full like this. They're more like that one right there, like these. Oh boy. No, ah, ah, ah. Sit. Good girl. Good girl. I know, you're really gross though. You're really gross though. Ah. Good girl. You need to be brushed. So I want to give you an update on Bella's training. She's doing so much better. We had a long talk with her breeder and she kind of laid out the problem and the solution. So what we've been doing, a lot of positive praise, of course. Um, we've also gotten her a beeping, vibrating shock collar. Now we don't use the shock portion and I haven't even used the vibration actually. She has responded so well to just the beep. Um, and so you use that uh, she was escaping the pasture. I could not keep her in. As the moment I had my back turned, she would escape. The reason is, where this gate has to open, there has to be a spot for it to slide, and, and it has to be big enough for this and that to go through. So that big dog was able to squeeze through that area there. So eventually I want to replace these gates somewhere down the road with like two that open like that, so we don't have to worry about that because I've got the same issue on the other gate coming into the cottage garden. But the moment I had my back turned, she would be out. And like I said, she was getting, she was back to being um, more destructive and digging and eating things. It only took a couple of times of me putting her in the pasture and spying on her. And when she would start to wriggle through there, I pushed the button, it would beep the collar and that would stop. And it only two times, I think, I, I beeped it and she was done and has not left the pasture without my permission since. Now she's still a little hyper, but that's just her age. She's a teenager and you know, that should settle out of her within the next several months. The beeping of the collar has also worked on her barking in Daisy's face. Um, she would go down there and just incessantly stand six inches from Daisy's face and just bark, bark, bark. It's no fun for the neighbors and it's no fun for Daisy either. The digging, I have not used the collar for the digging. Um, I haven't really done anything about the digging. I mean, part of that is being a teenager, part of that is being bored, and uh, part of that is just, that's what they do. They dig a spot, like in the summertime, it's not summer yet, but they dig a, a low area there to get in to be cooler. So I'm not punishing her for that. I'm not even correcting that right now. We'll see how it plays out once she gets older once we have more animals for her uh, here update on the sheep the sheep will be coming here uh, in about a month so mid may i guess very excited about that about the second dog i mentioned a couple videos back that we were going to be getting another marama puppy to hopefully remedy some of this behavior 
Um, we've thought a lot about it. We've been back and forth. Stay. Good girl. Nah. Sit. Good girl. Stay. We've been back and forth. Pros, cons. Um, we're going to hold off on getting another puppy right now. We're going to see how, you know, growing up a little bit more helps Bella. The training and the sheep coming. And then at that point, we'll reassess, you know, would this be a good idea or not? I don't want to make a commitment to yet another animal if it's not necessary, first of all. But I just, I don't want to overburden what we've already got here going on and just kind of, I think bringing two sheep and another dog at the same time, <clears throat> that would have just been a crazy amount of responsibility um, and just, and then just more dynamics of things that would be changing at one time. So yeah, that's the decision right now. We've made another decision here on scheduling of our videos. Uh, we're still going to be doing the Saturday, Sunday, Next Level Gardening videos, but we are going to change up the homestead. Um, we're going to keep the Friday, uh, but instead of Tuesday, we're going to try moving it to Wednesday. Getting three videos out through the weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, it's really difficult. There wasn't one this week, as you noticed, a Tuesday video. It's really difficult to then have one day and then we have to have another video out. I like to keep my Sundays for family time and not working. So that only gave me Monday to film for Tuesday's video. So did you hear Daisy? So doing it on Wednesday will give me Monday and Tuesday to film for the Tuesday video. So that should uh, relieve some of the pressure. So we're going to try it that way for a little bit and see how it goes. Let's go listen to Daisy. Now she stops, of course. When Daisy was up here the other day, she almost pushed this tree over. I hear you. I'll be down in a second. She almost pushed this tree over and she busted this. And she busted this tree open. She pushed it over. Look at this. I'm going to have to try to see if I can fix this. I had tied her to this fence and I guess I left the rope a little long or she was able to stretch it, but she got to both these trees. Anyway, that's it for this video. I will see you guys on Wednesday.